hi everyone so this is going to be my first attempt of uh, presenting a podcast to you guys it's going to be a solo one but i'm hoping to bring in some guests um particularly in the area of uh, wealth transfer and um joseph storehouse um those who've um already built um warehouses or joseph storehouses um, it would be nice to bring them on to um to speak to us basically on how they've um you know their journey and how um the lord's been equipping them for years you know so um so but today i want to talk about um with how to prepare basically um so one of the ways to prepare obviously is um to have uh, resources ready you know have uh, a, a storehouse um or a storage of of things you know but as you and i know that there are times where no matter how much somebody um somebody has um they can still run into trouble you know and there are times where people need um extra um like a supernatural help really they need the hand of god to help them um I, for like for example if you guys remember the time when i was in uh, um i was on holiday and then i went to paris and then i uh, and then i got stuck um and an an angel the lord sent an angel to help me and my mom to to make a, um you know making our journey back to uk and uh, so in s- situation like that for ex- as an example money was not the issue you know um it didn't matter the amount of money i had in my pocket or in my wallet or in my bank account my card at that time it absolutely made up ab- it made up ab- it made absolutely no difference you know um what i what i needed was um god to intervene so and likewise it would be in the um in the end of time in the end times you know the 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 period that we've like i said i said we're entering into that period we've just stepped into that period now actually and it's just going to intensify and intensify so um in this video i want to just basically touch on one key thing that um is required apart from um physical um items so as you know the the um that word uh, wealth of the what's it called the wealth transfer that word actually comes from a scripture where the lord discusses where the, the lord um tells us that um he said that he would he has reserved the wealth of the wicked for the righteous so the righteous will, will inherit the wealth of the wicked that's where that word uh, that wealth transfer thing comes from actually so there is a, a um a shifting from one hand to another set set of hands uh, to one group of people to another group of people to people who've lived their life in one particular way to a new uh to to people who are living their lives in a different type of way that's the way of the lord you know so actually um wealth transfer is not something that um is purely um uh what do you call it it's purely a f- physical um and i'm talking about end time wealth transfer now the end time wealth transfer cuz don't forget there has been transfer of wealth throughout all of um the history of mankind you know there's been um wealth passing from one group of people to another group of people from one nation to another nation etc etc so um so but what we're talking about is uh um end time wealth transfer and end time wealth transfer is when the bride of the lord moves in her highest um in her highest calling basically her she's uh, she's well ready to do all the things that she's she's been assigned to do on earth you know and uh, and that will include um unleashing of um uh unlimited resources and that would include the wealth of the wicked um being assigned being given to the church you know but you see excuse me in the end time the 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 church 
it's a it's a, a, a different kind of um it's it's a different kind of church it's it's not all that we see right now that calls itself a church there's a there are many forms of church right now you know um many different groups will tell you that they are christians you know but actually when you look at what they confess or what when you look at what they celebrate you realize that they are not um honoring the god of the bible you know the the the, the lord the lord our lord jesus christ they're not really really honoring him and they're not they're not bringing glory to to god almighty you know so but as we're entering into the end time um there will be a it's a, a removing you know the lord says come out of her my people so this there's a removing of 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 the the body of christ those who are of the lord are going to be pulled out from the world to move into her what's going to be her finest hour you know and some of that moving will include um sorry some of that moving will be just you and i making a decision to obey god in something he's asking us to do so we willingly obey and do it and for some of us it will be more um we 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 we're willing but it's a struggle so we're willing to do it but it's a daily struggle to to do it but nevertheless we have turned and we're we're going towards the the way of the lord you know but there are others where it's literally going to be a yanking away from the world the lord's gonna in his mercy and in his loving kindness he's literally gonna yank some of us literally pull us out like you know um forcefully he's just gonna pull us out from the world into um into where he wants us to be um does uh, does the lord do that because I, I hear people say no oh, the lord's a gentleman uh, the, the the Lord, the Holy Spirit is gentle, yes, because the Lord says that we should be don't, gentle as dove and as wise as serpent. But that uh, that saying, you know, gentle man, blah, 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 that's not actually um, something that you necessarily, um, basically you don't apply uh, humanistic um, virtues to god you know it's the other way around it's the lord who tells us what his virtues are you know um because again it's it's that saying where you say that he is the potter and we are the clay so we don't then turn around to the potter and say to the potter oh this is what you are no you don't know what he is he tells you what he is and then you go ah okay so this is what you are and then he says yeah this is what i am because he tells you or he unveils it he reveals it to you and you see it and i'm saying this because we really must start to um get more into um getting to know our heavenly father and getting to know how he moves because how we are, how much of God we understand will help us in stewarding the wealth that the Lord is going to be releasing to, to, into our hands, you know. Um, and that includes the seasons of waiting on the Lord, you know. The more we understand him and the more we know his nature and his character, the more we appreciate the waiting time and um, the timing of the Lord, you know. So... Um, so anyway what i was saying earlier when i went into the whole gentleman sort of thing is um you know so just be mindful thinking that the lord is not able to forcefully pull somebody out from one situation into another situation he's able to do that you know and just be mindful also in that um teaching that um you know um god cannot do something um I, I, you know, God, God will never do something against someone's will. Um, yes, yeah, we've got to be careful with that because we need to focus on how it's explained in the scriptures, and and again, not put humanist, human, humanistic understanding into the way of how of our heavenly Father. There are places in the scripture where um, the Lord stopped somebody against their will okay 
um, they were on, on track doing something. They were bent on doing that thing. They had made a decision that this, there are many numerous examples, so I'm not necessarily going to name one um, because I would like you to, to, to go ahead and, and, and remember some of these examples. But, you know, they're on their way to do what it is that they've said they're going to do. And then the Lord stops them, you know, dead on, on their tracks and say, and say what, what are you doing? You're not doing that. You're not going here. This is where you're going. That it's my will, Lord. I don't care if it's your will. You're not going there. You're going this way, you know. So except you, during those circumstances, they they could never argue with God because God really shows, you know, because it's so obvious that this is God. So, you know, they're so in awe that you're, of course you're not going to say, oh, you know, it's my will. You know, you're not going to be arguing with God. You're going to go, yes, Lord, absolutely, Lord. You know, sorry, Lord. You know. Um, I, I didn't understand that it was you, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So with that being said, back to what I was saying, the, um, the, the uh, end time church must remove herself from the ways of the world to her calling. And the end time, uh, the, the wealth transfer that I was shown and many other people have been shown this, you know, um, visions of, of wealth transfer, visions of resources, of um, um, ec economic uh, resources. I mean, um, like, for example, that um, experience, that uh, um, heavenly experience that I had, um, sorry, not, not in heaven, I mean, that um, God experience that I had is a better way to say it. The one where um, the angels, there were lots of angels that were sent out and those angels were given bags of, um, of, uh, of, of coins. They were, the, the bags were full of coins, you know, and they were giving these bags to each person, you know, and I, I was waiting there and, and to, waiting there patiently and uh, really, really longing that an angel will come and give, give me a bag. And thankfully, um, an angel did come and give me a bag, you know, but there are tons of like lots of people all over the place they were that were receiving bags from these angels so um so yeah so with that being said that goes to tell you that the wealth transfer is actually uh direct directly um the leading of the lord himself you know it's something that heaven itself is participating in it's something that is actually in god's timetable it's it's in god's way and then it requires us to be in right standing in position to receive uh what god has for us so um i don't know how long i've been talking for but um but anyway i will i'll be finishing off soon oh 13 minutes okay i've been talking for 13 minutes so but i'll be finishing off soon basically so in conclusion i'd like to basically say that um you know what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are doing the the last instruction that god asked you to do make sure that you've done it yeah so uh make sure that you're not in a place where you're saying that you don't know what God wants. You, you don't know what God wants you to do. Um, you know, you're, you're confused or, you know, or you can't hear God clearly or, or that sort of thing. If you're in that situation, then most likely uh, you need to go back to the last instruction that he gave you and see if you've, uh, if you've answered if you've done whatever it was that the Lord asked you to do, have you done it? So if you've done it, then of course you, you need to now start really, really um, pressing in to, to find out what the Lord is saying to you, you know. Um, but if you haven't done it, then you, you have to do that because generally a lot of times um, you find we we humans it's very very difficult for us to hear the the next thing that our Lord is saying to us if we are still um, in rebellion on the last thing that he told us to do 
and i'm sorry i'm using that word rebellion because it's not necessarily rebellion for everybody but you know if i use that word then it comes strong isn't it because eventually if we delay and delay and make excuses and make excuses there comes a time where um uh rebellion kick, kicks in you know because um the heart the, the the more you resist what god has asked you to do and you resist and resist and resist eventually the heart will become hardened yeah, and when the heart becomes hardened, rebellion kicks in, you know, and then you, you rebel and then uh, self-will kicks in, you know, oh, you know, God is not going to uh, come against, what's, what's how, how do we say it? Um, you know, God will not uh, do something against you. God will not ask you to do something against your will. The other one that we tend to say is, um, oh, God knows my heart. Um, you know, the other one we, we love to say is, um, um, oh, it's, it's by grace. It doesn't matter. It's by grace. It doesn't matter. But you and I know that in a household, if you're a father or you're a mom, you know that if you are saying something to a child and the child is not um, taking heed to what you're saying, you know that it matters. Yeah, it does matter. And if you're saying something to a child, and the child go, and you hear the child saying to their siblings oh you know daddy knows my heart and the one of the siblings says oh have you done that thing dad said you should do oh daddy knows my heart daddy knows my heart when you go to lie down to go to sleep and that thing you've been asking that child to do is you you understand the, the consequences if they don't uh, listen and obey you are you going to go to bed happy thinking oh my child knows that i know their heart no you're going to go, it's good she knows I know her heart or he knows I know his heart. Nevertheless, it grieves me that my child is not hearing, you know, hard, hard of hearing. They're not hearing what I'm saying, you know, they're not obeying me. So if that's the way it is for earthly moms and dads and uh, um, uncles, aunties, you know, um, guidance, you know, adults that, that look after a child. If you yourself will go to bed being a little bit grieved that the child is not obeying you, they're not listening. How much more God, the Lord God Almighty, you know? So even though there is that thing that's uh, a lot of uh, us believers we tend to say oh god knows my heart or oh it's by grace yeah it is by grace but the grace is there to help us obey god and what does that mean that means that there's a bridge yeah a bridge called grace shall we say so the lord wants to get you here and you're here yeah and it's hard for you to do because you're too used to your own ways. And this is you. Let's say this is you. Uh, wait. Yeah, sorry. This, let's say this is you. And this is where the Lord wants you to go to. So what happens is that the Lord gives grace. And so what happens is it becomes like a bridge. Yeah, a bridge like that. So you're here. This is where, you, where the Lord wants you to be. So he creates grace to meet you yeah so now this is touching you and you can start going and going and going and going and get to where god wants you to be that's what the grace of god is there for in other words when the grace of god is there because the grace of god is there actually because the bible says that jesus when he came he came with he, he will he had grace and more grace and also he came to give us grace as well it says that it was it's by grace that we have we are saved etc and also it says that there is a generation that cries out grace grace so like um extra amount of grace is given to the end time generation to you and i you know because we're the last baby you know we're the last born so the last born is always like spoiled in my opinion i feel the last born usually is the one that's spoiled and um if you look at jacob jacob he kind of spoiled joseph i know in the end there was another younger brother but at the time joseph was kind of the the last one um 
when you know when there was a season joseph was the last one you know and and jacob really spoiled him and uh and actually when you look at look at the scripture we are the last generation if we are the last generation some people don't think we are but assuming we really are in the end times which i believe we are and we are the last generation don't you see that our heavenly father is spoiling us how do I know that? How do you know that, Sharon? Because in the scripture, uh, Paul actually talks about, um, is it Paul? I think it's Paul. He talks about the, um, the, uh, um, the, 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 what's it? The crowd of uh, witnesses, you know, in heaven. Those, um, those people who've gone before us, you know, and how they are cheering us on, cheering on the last generation. And um, there's another place as well where it talks about, um, you know, greater works, you know, and uh, and another place where it talks about, um, yeah, of course, there's the wealth transfer one as well that is uh, laid out for those in the end time as well. There are so many scriptures actually um, to, to suggest that actually the, the Lord does... Um, he pulls out the best of the best. You remember, there's another scripture where he says, he says, we save the best wine for last, you know? So, um, and it's the end time, the end time generation will, will receive the best of the wine because uh, it's saved, saved up for the, for the end, you know? So, um, so anyway, so yeah, so I was talking about the grace. So there is more grace given to you and I, um, much, much, much more grace. Because also, let's not forget that we are living in a generation where we do need extra grace. There's so much craziness going on that we actually do need the extra grace. So now you have the grace of God and here you are wanting to do what it is, but you're struggling, you can't do it. The grace of God is there to help you so that when you fall and you, you don't do it, you get back on a grace. And when you fall, you don't do it. You can get back on a grace, yeah, and keep going. So the grace of God is there to cushion you for those times that you struggle. I hope you understand that. So that's what the grace of God is there for. The grace of God is not here and you are here. The grace of God helps you to meet the the calling that God has for you. That's the grace of God it helps you to marry. It marries the two for you. Yeah, it helps you to to achieve the calling. It's like a cushion because most of us will fall, you know, every now and then. And it's because of the grace of God that we're able to to stand up again and keep going stand up again fall stand up again fall stand up again the grace keeps us you know going you know and you of course you repent you say lord i'm sorry and you keep going and you keep going and you keep going until you meet this you know but the grace leads you yeah so there is the grace of god there to help us to do that so therefore for those of us who have been called to do a particular thing in preparation for the wealth transfer, though it might be a struggle, though it might be a, a, um, something that's, that would sort of break your heart to do, um, it's a hard decision for some of you. The Lord's asking you to lay something down. The Lord's asking you to give something up. The Lord is asking you to um to end the relationship you have with someone or some people or yeah or, yeah with someone some people something whatever the lord's saying to you come out of this yeah because don't forget there's that scripture it says my people come out of her yeah so for us coming out it will play out in different ways for some people it's a case of the lord's asking you to lay something down like I said, and you know, I've already said that earlier, lay something down, end the relationship, give up something, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and it could be painful. Um, a lot of times it's usually painful actually. And uh, if you guys remember, I shared with you in that time, um, the last live stream that I did with um, the one where um, Brother Keith joined us. And I shared with you guys that there was the one thing that the Lord asked me to do 
and I've been struggling with it since last year. And basically, it's to let go of something. And it's such a struggle. But by his grace, and I don't give up. I don't give up. Because I keep saying to him, please don't give up on me. I say to him, don't give up on me, Lord. I'm on it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm on it. I'm trying my best. And, you know, once in a while, I, I'll do the little bit. I'll do the little bit. And then, I, and then, you know, there might be one day and I'll do a massive load of it, you know. Sorry about the background noise. I do a massive load of it, and then, and then the following day, and I say, "Oh, I'm nearly there." Off, and then I notice that there's quite still quite a, a lot more to do, you know. And it's like, "Oh my goodness, it's never ending." But please, Lord, I, just help me, you know. And then there will be times when I just can't do it. I just don't don't want to. Um, I'm like, Lord, is, isn't this enough? And it's like, no, you know, you need to do, you need to do what, what I've asked you to do. And, and then I have to keep going and keep going. And uh, and if this sounds familiar to you, you're not alone, you know? So I've shared this. It's, I have my own walk of where the Lord's called me to let go of something. And I'm, I'm doing it. I'm not the one who's, uh, who's sort of, you know, I'm there already. There's been times when the Lord's asked me to do something and I'm phew, yep, do it, phew, there, instant. But then there are those things that is such a struggle, you know, but nevertheless, you don't give up and you keep going and you keep going. Yeah. And, um, and, and if you're somebody who's done it, you know, then lift up the church in, in prayer, you know, pray for the church, pray for the body of Christ, that as many as are called, will um, leave the things of the world and leave the things of their past or leave the things in their surrounding whatever it is the lord's asked them to leave that they would leave that and cling ever so close to closer to the lord jesus christ that ought to be our prayer um for the body of christ because there is a calling that's gone out in the spirit spirit realm saying um, my people come out of her you know of course, that calling has been there for many, many, many years. But I mean, now it's even louder, you know. And of course, we are talking about um, financial breakthrough and wealth transfer and and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So all those sort of things, you let that go. And uh, the other thing is, if you cling to something God's asking you to let go of, eventually what will manifest will be that um you know that person is now looking upon that thing as an as an idol and you don't want an idol you know there's a scripture um where the lord actually speaks to us about um you know about him helping us but then he says that we have to turn away from um anything that that has become an idol you know um so that means that for us to touch the wealth that the Lord is calling us to um, to steward, there really has to be um, a, a pulling away and a pruning and a, a separation and um, uh, what's that word? Um, consecration, you know. Um, is consecration the word I'm looking for? Sorry, there's another word uh sanctification no consecration yeah consecration and and uh yeah and of course being sanctified but but we need to consecrate and get away from from all of that you know i'm just trying to see if i can find that scripture here uh it says here my eyes are ever toward the lord for he shall pluck my feet out of the net uh there is a place where it says something about idols where is it Sorry, for your name's sake, O oh Lord, pardon my iniquity. Do not remember the sins of, okay, um, lead me if I, oh, I can't remember where it is. I thought it was in um, Psalm 25, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's in Psalm 24. Basically a scripture where, the, where they say, um, I have not lifted up my eyes to an idol, you know, or the Lord saying, you know, um, for, I will help those who have not lifted their eyes to an idol. Um, so you can find that either in Psalm 24 or Psalm 25. And um, 
where is it? And I, I can't exactly see it right now. Okay. So um, anyway, I think uh, I think that's it now. So I'll I'll end the video now and uh, and be blessed and uh, be encouraged in the ways of the Lord and uh, get yourselves ready for the days coming because um yeah because it's coming very quickly you know in this in this video i was actually go gonna go on to talk about um the the other part of the preparation for the end time that is not uh, f f uh physical that is not um earthly things like um you know financial wealth transfer i was actually going to talk about the other part of it that is more um needing the hand of god to do something do you remember i gave the example earlier in the video on the about the angel that that helped me and my mom and there was no amount of money that would have done it you know so it's that sort of thing so in the end time w there are going to be situations where um no matter how much xrp you've got or how much um uh blockchain uh, knowledge blockchain technology knowledge that you have or or whatever knowledge that you have or whatever you've got on your crypto wallet there comes that time where what you actually need is god to help you at a particular in to help you in a particular situation you know you know no, no amount of um worldly resources is able to do it but it's the hand of god that that needs to move to to help to help uh, that person you know so um so that means that as we prepare we really must to uh focus on um, let our focus be on clinging to the lord and like i said it, it really must be a place where we listen to him and we obey him and for many of us the lord is calling us to um do something that really separates us from how how we were before to the new person he's wanting us to be so in other words something that i'm doing right now the lord wants to take me to a new sharon and um so that i'm no longer identified as the old sharon you know so and it's the same for for everybody all of us in the body of christ you know um where where he's taken us to we can't go there with the baggage that we carried yesterday yeah so um so if, if there's anything you can take from this uh video today from this uh what's the time ah it's 32 minutes okay so maybe this is a, a podcast shall we say let's say this is my first podcast and more to come <laughs> but um but if there's anything you can take away from this uh from this discussion it's that where the lord is taking you to um you cannot go there with yesterday's baggage yeah so whatever that was heavy yesterday it's not needed for where you're going um for wh where you're going and the sooner you get rid of that the, the better you know and as i say that i'm listening to myself as well the so sooner i get that done the better you know and constantly i'm asking the lord is it okay now is it done and the lord says no a bit more is it okay now no uh, a bit more you know so you can do the same you know until you have a peace of mind the settling on your heart that you've done all that the lord wants you to do you've done it you know your heart is at rest now it's done you know and then you can rest you know so um all right so anyway i'll see you guys in another video uh be blessed Bye.